Let's have a bit of fun and do something that I would define as practical. Of course, the word practical is, is subjective. Depends if this is something you would like to do. Let's say you're a web designer and you're looking for a really kind of neat looking button. Very popular today, of course, are the glassine buttons. You see them all over the place. Or maybe you have a design, you just want to put something like that into the design. What I want to create is a glassine button. We're actually going to be using four layer styles on that one layer. If you're using my demo, you're partially there in two areas. You're there in terms of the color I would like you to choose and the resolution. The resolution of this document is 72. If you make your own, that's fine. But I would like you to make sure that the resolution you choose when you say File New is only 72. And you choose one of these colors over here. One of these light cyans. Doesn't have to be one in particular, but a light cyan. Don't go too dark. Fill the background with that particular color. Next step, what we want to do is we want to begin the process of making the glassine button by creating a new layer. Click right there. Double click on the word layer one. Don't have to do this, but I like to name my layers. We'll call it glass button. Makes sense, I suppose. In that layer, I want you to draw a circle. So it doesn't matter what color you use. I just click this button right here, which reset me to black and white. Doesn't matter the color. We'll come over here, see this button right here? Click on that button and go to the Ellipse tool. Come over and select the glass button layer and draw a circle by holding the shift key down. Now, we'll make something probably bigger than you would use for a button. It'll help in our demonstration. You might make them smaller. So we're starting with a button this size, perfect circle, and it is inside of that layer, all by its lonesome. Move it around just to prove that point. There we go. Let's start the process. Come down to our FX button and go into Drop Shadow. In Drop Shadow, we need to make some changes. Now again, this is based on resolution too, the numbers we're going to choose. I want you to select the shadow color right here. Change that color, go into RGB, change those numbers to 70, 20, 80. That's a 70 tab, 20 tab, 80. And we're getting a deep purple color. Go ahead and click OK. The other changes we need to make is make sure that the angle is at 120 degrees and we're using global light. Set the opacity to about 70. That's not that much of a difference, but about 70 instead of 75. The distance, and I like typing the numbers rather than moving the sliders. Let's change the distance to 15. The spread to, oh, around 25. And we're going to change the size to 25. So there's where we are right now. Don't click OK. What I want you to do is move over and select the gradient overlay layer style. Gradient overlay right here. Once you're inside the gradient overlay layer style, go up to whatever gradient is here and click right in that box. That's going to open up the gradient editor. Select the upper left hand corner gradient. That'll give us a place to start. And we all have that one. It's called foreground to background. Whatever the colors are over here will be the colors that you see here. So that's fine. With that one selected, we need to make a few changes. I want you to make sure this crayon, I call them crayon sliders, this crayon is pure black. So we're going to select it. I'm going to come up to our swatches. And here's pure black right here. Go ahead and select that. This one, select it and make it pure white. Now these down here, make them both pure white. Select that one. Click up here. This one looks like it's already pure white, but let's just make sure. Change the name from custom to white to transparent. How did it go transparent? These two buttons control the colors. Okay, we're saying white to white, so it should be completely white. These two buttons here, or sliders, control transparency. If you choose black, which we did, that means 100% opaque, it's there. If we choose white, we're saying fully transparent. That's why it's going transparent. That's exactly what we need. Click the new button right here. Okay, go ahead now and click OK. As you can see, we now have one. If you click here, it's down here. We actually made a gradient. You really didn't have to do that, but hey, you might want to use it again. 
Next step, got a couple of things we have to do. In the gradient style, change that to radial. And you can watch what's going on over here. Click the reverse button. It's going to put it on the outside. And so it goes from white to the outside of the circle and fades to transparent in the middle. Drop the opacity to about, oh, 50%. Something like that. So it should look something like this. Click OK. On the glass button layer, change the fill to zero. So you can click here, move the arrow. You can click the word fill and drag whatever you want to do. And you get that. It's a very subtle look right in the middle. We did all that just to get that right there. If we turn off background, you can see it is indeed transparent. We're just really seeing through to the background. All right, let's go back to our effects. Go into the FX button here, and our next one is going to be Inner Glow. So go to Inner Glow. Now we need to change the color. We need to get into here, and let's go ahead and change that to the same thing we did before, and that would be a 70, 20, 80. So 70, press the Tab key, 20, press the Tab key, 80. Got that deep purple again. Click OK. A couple other things to tweak here. Set the blend mode to multiply. The technique is softer, which is what we want. Edge size, 40 pixels. Opacity, actually about 8%. And like I said, it's always easier for me to type the number in. All right, so we're there. Very subtle effect. Next, click on Inner Shadow. For Inner Shadow, we need that same purple. So we're going to click right here. And we're going to go 70, 20, 80. Same numbers. 70, tab 20, tab 80. But this time I want it a little bit lighter, just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is click on that circle that's right over here and drag it up just a little bit. Just lighten it up a little, not a lot. Click OK. Make sure that you've got multiply for your blending mode. Opacity, 75% will be fine. Distance, let's go 50. 15 pixels for distance. Choke, which is how it controls that inner shadow. And we're going to go about 5 on that. And for size, let's go to 30. Starting to shape up, isn't it? Click OK. We have one more thing to do to kind of finish it off. Let's go ahead and create a new layer above glass button. Let's call this highlight. I need a selection based on that circle. Here's the trick. Hold down the control key. That's a command key on a Mac. Go to the thumbnail for glass button right here and hold the control key down and click. That's just a quick way to select non-transparent areas in a layer. And that's nice to know. Next step, go up to the word select and go down to modify contract. Contract by about 10 pixels. Now remember, a lot of the numbers we're using in all of our effects are based on that this image has a resolution of 72. If yours doesn't, it has a resolution of 300, you're going to have to make that number bigger. What I'm looking for is a distance like about like this one. Okay, that's all I'm looking for. Now here's the next trick. I want you to go into your elliptical marquee selection tool. If you remember how this works, if I hold the Alt key down, Option key on a Mac, any area I intersect, it'll take a bite out of it, if you will. So if I hold the Alt key down and do something like that, as you can see, it takes a bite out. This is what I want you to do. Let me press Undo. Put your cursor right in the middle. Just eyeball it. Put your cursor where it's pointing right about in the middle, and then I want you to move it down and to the right to about there. So we're going off center. I'm not holding the mouse down. I'm just moving the position of the cursor. The reason I'm going down and to the right is because we chose 120 degrees for all our layer styles, so our shadows and everything are going down and to the right. Once you're right about here, I want you to hold the Alt key down and start dragging. Now you'll notice you get that. Now here's the trick. I want you to make sure, listen carefully, make sure you do not let go of the mouse, but I want you to let go of the Alt key. Now nothing changes. I want you to go back and press the Alt key again. Never let go of the mouse. And now you're drawing out from center. What do I want to do? I want to leave the Alt key held down. I want to take a little crescent moon out of this thing. 
like about like that. Now hold the shift key at the same time too. You got enough fingers and that gives you a perfect circle. So I'm getting something like about, you may have to practice this a few times, no big deal, and get about that. That's what I want. So by holding the Alt key down, letting go and pressing it again, I drew out from center. In addition, I kept the Alt key held down, which meant intersect and remove. In that layer, I want you to fill that area with white. So if you've got white as your background color, hold down the Control key, Command on a Mac, and press the Backspace key. All right, you filled it with white. Press Control D, which is deselect. Next step, let's do this. Come up to the word filter and go down to Gaussian blur. The blur, Gaussian blur. You need to soften that thing up. Actually, a six is about right for what I see. I like that. I'm going to leave that at a six. Now, that six is based on the 72 resolution. Don't forget that. Click OK. Notice how that highlight just is the icing on the cake. It really makes this really look like a glass button. All of these steps, all of this work to create what you see up there right now, an authentic looking glassine button. Here's something I want you to do. Make sure you save this. In the next segment in this lesson, we're going to be using this one more time, and I don't really want to have to make you go through this whole process all over again. I'd say do it anyway for practice, but the idea is let's not save it because we're going to need it in the next segment in this lesson.